Um, hi everyone, I am Yuan. I am one of the teams um, implementing the registration feature for Monai. So I'm going to talk about the regist feature, uh, registration features in Monai uh, for this presentation. So firstly, uh, registration. Registration is the process of transforming different image data sets into the one coordinate system with matched image contents. So basically you can do the registration across multi uh, different scenarios. For example, you can uh, do registration across different time points. For example, um, when a patient with tumor have their MRIs at different time points, maybe one earlier and one later. And by registering those two MRIs together, you'll be able to have a better view of how the tumor has been, uh, has been developed during different time space. And also for different modality, for example, uh, when uh, during the surgeon planning, uh, it is also quite important to uh, detect uh, the non-target organs. So when we plan, plan the path for some certain surgeries, um, those unrelated organs won't be harmed during the process. And those are usually um, conducted through using images from different modalities. Uh, one common example is, um, so for example, when people do the surgery for early stage prostate cancer. Uh, one commonly used use that, uh, modality is the CT image. However, when we want to have higher resolution, we would like to include MRI image as well. And at that point, we have two images, uh, but from different modalities, and we want to register them all together so we can have a more completed look. Also, we can do that across patients and extra. So for a more detailed example, so here we can see um, a example, which is also a tutorial that we have implemented in the Monai tutorials, which is about registering uh, lung CTs. So firstly, uh, for registration, when we define it as a task, usually we have two images input. One is the moving image and one is the fixed image. And what we are trying to do is to uh, predict a deformation that could be used to deform the moving image. So or in other ways, we are trying to match the moving image into the fixed image coordinates. So in this example, we are registering the lung CTs from the same patients. One is at expiration and one is at inspiration. Um, and we can see it, during registration, there are different types of registration, but usually for deep learning, we can either do uh, so they're basically unsupervised because it takes so much time to have a very uh, concrete, um, uh, sorry, a very concrete uh, deformation field to be predicted. So we're usually doing that in a super unsupervised way, but that doesn't mean we cannot have auxiliary informations. For example, in this case, we have the um, label of the inner side of the, oh, the label of the lung. So we are using the label as auxiliary information to help us to do the registration task. So here we have the moving image and the fixed image. The task of our, so the task of the tutorial is to predict a DDF. A DDF is called a dense displacement field. So specifically it tells you that um, which pixel of the fixing a fixed image should be corresponded by uh, to each pixel of the moving image. So it's like a dense um, matrix of the size H times uh, like spatial size, but with three channels. So each corresponding to the X, Y, and Z. So in this, uh, so okay, in this task, we have the moving image and we have the fixed image. We are trying to predict the DDF. And usually we can have three different types of losses. Firstly, we have a uh, image loss, which is always used. So we want, so once we have the DDF, we can warp the moving image into the fixed image coordinates. And in that situation, we would hope that the warp image should be very similar to the fixed image. So we usually have an image loss, which is calculated on the uh, dissimilarity uh, between the warp image and the fixed image. 
And secondly, we usually have a regularization because we want our DDF to be smooth, which is sensible because um, the displacement fields between two different images are usually smooth by itself along different coordinates. And finally, when we are doing the task with auxiliary supervision, uh, we would like the warp label to be similar to the fixed label. So, so basically, the only difference between the auxiliary supervised, uh, supervision mode of registration and unsupervised registration, I mean, totally unsupervised registration, is the inclusion of the label loss. Okay, um, so in the following slides, I'll go into walk through the tutorials that we've written and have a more detailed explanation on how we could use the Monai components to do such a registration task. So before I go in very deep, I want to specify that um, so the registration components in Monai are not designed as a end-to-end -end software so that you have an input and you can directly get an output. It is more designed in different modules so you can combine it and customize it into your favorite pipeline. And this tutorial or this example would be a, a general case about how those components could be usually used. And yeah, it's just an example of how those components could be used to perform the task. So the first step would be we are trying to get a data set. So as we've mentioned earlier, for a unsuper uh, oh, sorry, auxiliary supervised registration, we usually want our two different image inputs and their corresponding labels, which are fixed image, moving image, fixed label, and moving label. So the simplest way to do that is you have a dictionary mapping each component to their path. And then we can use that as an input to create a cache data set. So for example, in here, we've got our um, data decks, which is defined by linking all the paths to our like, so you have to download the image data set and then you have to link all the map all the components to their links. And we divided our data stick into two different components, like the first 18 um, pairs are used for the training and the rest of them are used for testing. And we combine that data stick with the transformation to generate our data set. So the transformation, transformation we here used is the dictionary transforms uh, implemented in Monai. By using them, you can have the same transformations applied to both your image and label. So for example, when you're doing random alignment, you want your image and label to be, uh, uh, to go through the affine transformation of the same type or they won't match anymore. So that's why we're using the key, uh, using the dictionary transforms. So here is an example of our image inputs. You can see, um, so the left two columns shows the moving image and the label and right two columns shows the fixed image and the label. You can see that um, the moving image and the fixed image are actually quite different. For example, we've got the red arrows pointing at those points where you can see a, like a more typical difference in structure between the fixed and moving image. And our task is try to have a deformation field so we can use that deformation field to warp our moving image to make it more similar to the fixed image. So before everything, before the training, all we need to do is to initialize our model, our warp layer and the optimizer. So in Monai, we have implemented two models um, specifically used for registration, which are the global net and the local net. The main difference lies in the global net could be used to predict a, a fine transformation. So you can have the rotation, uh, sharing, translation, and scaling for the whole image. And for local net, it's more for the um, for predicting the DDF. So you have a 
displacement, like three coordinate, uh, three channel coordinate displacement predicted for each of the pixels. So we uh, then we need the warp layer, which is used to warp our moving image by the deformation predicted to get the warped image, and finally the optimizer. In this example, we are using the local net. And then we need to initialize the different losses. So we've also have like the two specific image losses pre, uh, implemented in Monai for registration, which is the local normalized correlation loss and the global mutual information loss. Uh, more detailed information about losses could be viewed in the Monai API. And we have the label loss and the regularization loss. In this tutorial, we use the mean uh, MSE loss for the S image loss. We use the dials loss as the label loss. And uh, for because we want to have the label loss at different different scales, so we use the multi scale loss wrapper to wrap the label loss. And for regularization, we use most commonly used bending energy loss. So. Um, this is showing how we have the whole forward process. So given the image, uh, given the batch data and given the model, we firstly concatenate the moving image and the fixed image as an input into the model. And then we got a DDF. Then we use the warp layer to warp the moving image to get the warp image. And then we use the warp layer to warp the moving label to get the warp label. As the output, we have the predict image, predict label, and DDF. So during training, uh, for each step, as said before, we've got all those three components from the forward function. And then we can use them to calculate the image loss, label loss, and regularization loss one by one. And by adding all those losses and do the backwards on that sum of loss, we can have our network to backpropagate in the direction it should do. And during validation, we don't need to calculate the loss, but uh, we want to uh, calculate the dice metric. So the dice metric we're here using is the main dice metric also implemented in Monai already. Um, yes. So basically for the whole training process, we start by logging uh, or initializing the best metric as zero. And then we initialize the dice metric, metric from Monai. And for each epoch, we do the training. And for every validation interval of epochs, we do the validation. And we record the best checkpoint till the point. That means whenever we have a new metric that has achieved higher score than the earlier best metric, we save the new model. And as a result, we can see um, this is the uh, result we've got after the whole training process. So as you can see, the prediction is much more similar to the fixed image than the moving image. Um, so in this tutorial, due to the time limit, uh, we suggest authors when they train on Collab using the Jupyter Notebook provided to train only for five epochs to see how the loss is going down as an example. But uh, the whole process takes about one to two days to train to get the shown result. Uh, we've uploaded the pre-train results to the Google Drive, so the pre-train uh, the pre checkpoints could be downloaded in the Jupyter Notebook and then used to provide the validation and the visualization of the final output. Uh, besides the this example where we used a uh, auxiliary supervised input. Uh, auxiliary supervised registration to predict a DDF. There are other forms of deformation predictions supported by the Monai. For example, we could predict a DVF, which is a dense velocity field. And then we can use the implemented function uh, DVF to DDF 
which integrates the dense velocity field into the dense displacement field. Uh, by doing that, uh, we have a deformatic uh, deformation, which means uh, the DDF integrated from DVF is theoretically invertible and differentiable. Uh, that should be more corresponding to some of the real life situations when those core conditions and boundary uh, those boundary conditions are important. Also, we provide the affine transformation, as I mentioned earlier, that the affine transformation uh, transformation are recommended to be predicted with the global net. Um, here, we've given an example of a three D of one transformation matrix, which should output a 12 channel thing, uh, which corresponds to the A11 to A34. Uh, for the 2D, then you will try to predict a two times three matrix. Uh, we don't have a 3D example implemented in the tutorials for a fine transformation yet, but we've got a 2D example. As you can see those images, for each time we have a fixed image and we randomly rotate it or do the a fine transformation on it uh, to predict a moving image and the network will be able to detect that transformation and transform the moving image back to its original position. Uh, this is a toy example, but it shows the capability of the network to do such kind of things. So for this work, we want to thank the supports from NVIDIA, from the UCL medical image processing team, uh, the Candy team, and also DeepRack, which is another TensorFlow version of the registration function that we have uh, brought a lot of ideas from. Any questions? Great, Ewan. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation. We had lots of questions uh, during your talk. We might not be able to get to them all, but I will start asking a few of them that are here. Um, so the first question was, do you have to worry about the DDF deforming, uh, deforms the image in such a way as to replicate the motion seen in breathing, or does it not have uh, many degrees of freedom? Um, sorry. Can you repeat the question again, please? Yeah. Do you have to worry that the DDF deforms the image in such a way as to replicate the motion seen in breathing, or does it not have many degrees of freedom? Um, actually, in this example, we would help the DDF to um, to mimic, uh, mimic the motion of the breathing, because even though in those images we have provided in this example, um, we don't have tumors in the lungs, but uh, the ultimate target of this tutorial or of trying to register the images at different time points is that we can have a better look of how the same structure has been changed during, like, for example, at different time points. So that is actually something that we will hope to replicate. Great. Um, next question. Would this kind of supervised learning work if the two images have different regions of interest? For example, on MRI of the chest and another, another one of chest plus head. Um, okay, that's an interesting example. So from my understanding, it first depends on what the receptive field or the region of interest are available in the moving and fixed image. As we can see, what we're trying to do is we warp the moving image to assimilate the fixed image. So for example, in the moving image, if you have both the head and the chest, and in the fixed image, you have only the chest. I think it's possible that you have, I don't know uh, in reality how it will go because that really depends on the specific data information. But in theory, uh, it is possible to transform the moving image into a fixed image because there is no information in the fixed image that is missing from the moving image. However, if you have it the reverse way, for example, you have only the chest in the moving image and you have both the head and the chest in the deformation uh, in the fixed image. Well, in that case, it would be nearly impossible to get the head information because it's just lost of information source. Makes sense, yeah. Great, um, so next question. 
Does Monai provide any displacement field and regularization which permits non-continuous displacements for sliding organs? Um, so at this point, all the only deformation metric, sorry, the only regularization metric that we have provided is the, sorry, bending energy. Uh, but in the future, there may be more similar like or other losses that could be calculated on um, non-differentiable display, displacement fields to be provided. But at this point, I think the only option now available is the bending energy. Okay. Um, someone was asking, uh, they were wondering about the motivation for using deep learning for nonlinear registration. Uh, is it mainly for reducing the time for nonlinear registration? What, what is sort of the motivation behind using deep learning for it? All right, uh, so firstly, yes, there is a huge time reduction by using uh, deep learning for the registration, uh, which can be viewed in quite a lot of papers. For example, the voxel morph paper that they achieve the results, which is comparable to the um, implementation of NSP, uh, the classical results, but with much shorter time. And also we are hoping that during the development of the deep learning methods, we could have even better results than the classical uh, classical methods. Great. Yeah, I think I saw something about Voxelmorph in the chat. You, there, there's a lot of talk going on in there. So I definitely uh, would encourage you to go through and take a look. There's a, there's a lot of people asking different questions in there. I don't think we'll be able to get to them all, but we'll finish with one last question uh, yes. and then we'll take a break. Um, so let's see. Uh, so let's see, someone asked, um, what's the advantage of using the registration um, instead of training a unit model for a segmentation task? Is it less labeled data, less overfitting? Uh, what would be the advantages? I, um, so in theory, that if you have a registration, a really nice registration model, it would be uh, fantastic and ideal that um, it can do a lot of different tasks, including, for example, object detection and segmentation and things like that. But at the current stage, uh, we have to admit that in most of the cases, uh, the registration won't be able to achieve as good results as segmentation tasks with the same like backbone structure. Uh, however, during the registration, we don't need any label data. So it'll be a good idea to uh, use registration when you don't have that much of label data. And there are different uses of registration, except for like simply uh, for, for registration. For example, there have been use of registration for the future learning, where you can have uh, the registration to be used to generate more pseudo labels for the, like uh, for the novel classes. And for example, you could use registration as a guidance or a regularization when you're training uh, like for future learning, for example, that it will not only have attention on the base classes, but on the whole image. So that may do good when you train for, or when you test on novel classes. So, so yes, um, so basically, firstly, uh, registration would be more favorable when you don't have any labels, because with only the image, you still will be able to train the registration. And yeah. secondly, uh, registration could be used to assist other uh, assist other tasks. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think we will, there's a few other questions in chat, but we won't be able to get to them as we need to take a break right now to keep on schedule. But thank you, Yuen. Um, there is a lot of conversation going on in chat, so I definitely encourage the conversation to continue there. We do have a break right now, uh, but definitely thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much.